brought to you by L&M, the modern cigarette that lets you get full, exciting flavor through the modern miracle of the pure white miracle tip. Live modern. Smoke L&M. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Her name was Rose, and she was pretty. And that's all anybody in Dodge knew about the girl. She'd come in on the stage from the South a month before and opened a blackjack table in the Long Branch, working on a 50-50 split with a house. The game got a big play, of course. A woman gambler was a new thing in Dodge. And some of the smartest and crookedest card men in town started coming around to try their luck. But with Rose dealing, the house never lost. And after a three-week run of that kind of luck, I figured it was time to look into things. Oh, doggone it, Matt. We've been sitting here for an hour and a half. How long is it going to take to catch her cheating? Doc, we're not going to catch her. We're not? Yeah, the way she handles that deck, we could sit here till doomsday and never see a thing. Well, maybe she's dealing on us. Yeah, maybe... Uh, Chester. Chester. Oh, yeah, Chester. Maybe he noticed something. You know, playing right there at the table with her. That's the last place in the world to spot a crooked game, Doc. I swear, I just don't know what you could have been thinking of, Mr. Dillon. Why, she's as nice a young lady as you'd ever care to meet. Uh, how much did she let you win, Chester? Fourteen dollars and twenty cents. Yeah, but that ain't got nothing to do with it. I watched her every second. All right, all right, Chester. Who was the heavy loser, then? Well, that Elko Dean must have lost about $200 before he pulled out, but just by betting foolish, Mr. Dillon, why, he didn't have no more reason to do what uh-huh. he'd done. Than... Who else? Well, the ones there now, I reckon young Slim Raddick out about 150 as the game stands. Now, he's been losing every night for two weeks, the way I hear it. Well, he gets to making calf eyes at Rose and don't pay no attention to his cards. Oh, yeah, maybe that's how she does it, Matt. She gets them so all fired up over it that, that they don't care if school keeps an eye. Uh, somebody like young Raddock may be, but not the professional gamblers, Doc. <laughs> now, you sit down for a while, Chester. I'm going over and talk to her. Much obliged to you, Mr. Raddick. You doggone sure ought to be. Seems all I do. Oh, evening, Marshal. Hello, Slim. Your luck turning on you? It ain't turning no way. It's been against me right along. Then maybe you won't mind if I interrupt the game for a while. That is, with your permission, ma'am. I'd like to talk to you. Why not? All right, gentlemen, the game is closed. If you want to step over to the bar, the drinks are on me. Well, how about it, Marshal? Do I get a clean bill of health? Along what lines, Rose? Oh, running a square game. You've been watching me like a hawk for the last hour and a half. Every deal, every move I made. You see anything off color? Well, I saw Elko Dean slip a cold deck in on you. (laughs) So did I. But I'll give you ten to one. You didn't see me slip it right back out. (laughs) No, as a matter of fact, I didn't. Neither did Elko. 
And that mistake cost him $230. More eventually, because he'll be back here tomorrow night trying to get even. Uh, So the game is crooked, huh? Marshal, the man who taught me how to handle cards used to say, you can't cheat an honest man, Rose, so don't bother to try. But a crook is fair game any day. Uh Uh-huh. Tell me something, Rose. How does that fit young Raddick? Slim? Yeah. (laughs) That's different. Different how? He's been losing steady here at your table. It can't all be bad luck. I've tried to keep him away. I told him over and over again to stay out of it and leave me alone. Stay out of what, Rose? Ah, it doesn't matter. Here, Marshal. Take a look. Go on, count it if you want it. That's the money I've taken from Slim. $2,642. And when I leave Dodge, you'll get it all back. Every cent of it. Can I ask you something, Rose? What's a girl like you doing in this business, anyway? Hmm? Or in a living, for one thing? No, there are other ways, you know. None that I know as well. Besides, it lets me cover a lot of country. Look people over. Why is that so important? I'll tell you why, Marshal. I've spent four years now looking for one certain man. Now, you won't quit till you find him, huh? I found him. Tonight. Oh? What happens now? I'm going to kill him. Free yourself of old-fashioned ideas. Why don't you live modern? Freshen up your taste. Smoke an L&M. Only the modern miracle of the pure white miracle tip can bring all of L&M's full, exciting flavor through to you. And that's the big reason why today more people are changing to L&M than to any other cigarette. Remember, L&M draws easier. Tastes richer. Smokes cleaner. So live modern. Change to L&M. Make today your big red letter day and start to live the modern way. Live, live, live modern. Smoke an L&M. It's America's fastest growing cigarette. something, Mr. Dillon? No, no, what, Chester? The doggone ham you get nowadays ain't nothing like it used to be. Oh, is that something? Well, just look at that. My land, they don't even half smoke it anymore. Just put on more salt. That's all they do. Well, it's better than side meat, anyhow. Why, even down in Texas, we used to smoke our meat at least two days. How are you, Marshal? Chester? Oh, morning, Slim. Oh, Slim. You had breakfast yet? I'm aiming to right now. Oh, pull up a chair and join us, huh? Thanks, Marshal. My, you must have made a night of it. Didn't even get back to the ranch, huh? Oh, the ranch will keep. I have some eggs and ham, Jeff. Right away, Slim. Yeah. Say, maybe if you ain't tried this ham before, you ought to think twice. I've tried it, Chester. Most every morning out of my place. Jeff here buys all his meat from me. Oh. Well, <clears throat> it sure is a whole lot better than side meat. Uh, uh, how's the ranch coming along, Slim? Uh, yeah, had a good year? Best one yet. Mm-hmm. First time the place has brung me any hard cash. Feels mighty good to hear a few eagles jingling in your pocket. <laughs> you know, uh, might jingle some louder if you stayed clear of that blackjack table. Uh, my luck's bound to change. Uh, not with Rose dealing. She's warned you already, I understand. Told you to keep out of the game. 
I guess I'm a stubborn man, Marshal. Here's some coffee while you're waiting, Slim. Oh. Slim, what are you after? Well, it's like this. It's been five years now since I took that leased land up there on Bitter Creek. And I spent five winters out there all alone. That ain't good for a man. I need me a wife on the place. Huh? When did you decide that? Three weeks ago. First time I seen Rose. Oh. How does she feel about it? Hard to say. She got something on her mind that won't let her think of nothing else. Yeah, I know, Slim. She told me that she aims to kill a man. That's so. You wouldn't know her last name, would you? I never asked her. You know where she comes from? Nope. Any idea who the man might be? Marshal, if I did, I reckon I'd up and kill him myself. Just to make Rose happy. Yes, here. Sit down. Sit down, Matt. You're just in time. Huh? Oh, time for what? A poker game. We got these two drummers here, fresh off the Santa Fe from St. Louis. Oh, Matt, they're as green as grass. So help me, Doc. If you'd sweat as hard over a hill in the sick as you do trying to clip some tenderfoot, well, we'd have this a lot... This town's never been healthier, thanks to me. Matt, you got a minute? <laughs> yeah, sure, Kitty. I'll see you later, Doc. Yeah, maybe later will be too late. Oh, man, and you'll be sorry. I'm sorry to break in that way. Oh, that's all right, Kitty. Matt, I just found out. Oh, found out what? About Rose, who she is. Oh? Matt, she's Bill Prawley's daughter. Bill Prawley? That's right. The gambler who was killed in Liberal four or five years ago. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember. Rose Prawley, her name is. Bill Prawley's daughter. Uh-huh. Who told you, Kitty? Uh, Mule Skinner came in tonight. He saw a deal on the table out in New Mexico last year. Yeah, I guess that explains a lot of things about her. It explains one thing, Matt. I haven't told anybody, of course, but the word will get around. And once it does, she's through here. Nobody's going to buck a game run by Dirty Bill Prawley's kid. They'll know it's crooked. Yeah, maybe the word's already out. I noticed Slim Raddock's pulled out of the game. He's standing over there at the bar. And she threw him out, along with all the other players except Elko Dean. She said it was a private game. I guess Elko wants to get back the money he lost last night. Say, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, what is it, Jess? Oh, something kindly funny happened. You know that sawed-off shotgun Sam keeps behind the bar, the one with the pistol grip? Yeah, what about it? Well, it's gone, and Sam thinks maybe it was Rose that took it. Rose? Yeah, but that don't make sense. Her and Elko were just sitting over there at the blackjack table looking at each other. Neither one of them made... What's the matter, Mr. Dillon? We're about to have a killing on our hands, Chester. Free yourself of old-fashioned ideas. Why don't you live modern... Freshen up your taste. Smoke an L&M. Live modern. Smoke modern. Smoke L&M. Enjoy full, exciting flavor through L&M's pure white miracle tip. L&M draws easier. Tastes richer. Smokes cleaner. That's why today more people are changing to L&M than to any other cigarette. So free up. Freshen up your taste. Live modern. Change to L&M. Make today your big red letter day and start to live the modern way. Live, live, live modern. Smoke an L&M. It's America's fastest growing cigarette. What 
he going to do? I don't know, Kitty. What do you think she's planning? Well, I can guess. Chester, is Sam sure that Rose took that shotgun? Mm, he says she come back to the bar just before he missed it. Yeah. She could have hid it in the fold of her skirt. Elko's looking pretty white, Matt. Yeah, just look at him sitting over there facing each other. You know, ten to one, she's got that shotgun under the table pointed at him. Can't you slip up behind her, Matt? Grab her before she can use it? Uh, shotgun's not like a pistol, Kitty. All you gotta do is point in the general direction of your target. Yeah, but why'd she want to kill Elko? Uh, revenge, I guess. Chester, did uh, Slim Raddock hear about her having the gun? No, sir, nobody didn't. Sam called me to one side. Good. If word got around, somebody would be sure to lose his head and touch the whole thing off. That's gonna happen anyway, Matt. Elko's starting to get restless. He's sure gonna make a move soon. Well, it'll be his last one if he does. Matt! Oh, Matt! These plums are just ripe for the picking. <laughs> I can't hold up the game all night for you. I'm sorry, Doc. I'm busy. Oh, well, as long as you feel that way, Doc, you don't understand. Oh? Well, only one way to handle it, I guess. No, you stay there, Chester. Yes, sir. Be careful, Matt. Will somebody tell me what's going on here? Good evening, Rose. I'm sorry, Marshal. Table's closed. Oh? It's uh, not closed to Elko, then. Marshal, she Shut said... Up. <laughs> Elko and me have a, have a personal game going, Marshal. Yeah, I know. Better hand over the gun, Rose. Sit down. Sit down and put your hand flat on the table, Marshal. Same as Elko's got his. Good. Now keep them there. I guess you know this is a shotgun I'm covering you both with. Underneath the table. Yeah, I know that. But why'd you come over here if you knew that... Keep your voice down, Elko. Why didn't you shoot her from where you were standing? She's aiming to kill me, Marshal. Yeah, I figured that was about the way things stood. I knew I'd find him someday if I just kept traveling and kept on dealing cards. And last night it happened. I recognized him the minute he sat down at my table. I knew he'd be back tonight, and I was ready for him when he come. Now you mean to kill him, huh? She's crazy, Marshal. She's out of her Keep head. Keep your hands on that table. I mean to kill him. Why, Rose? If you knew me, if you knew who I am, you'd understand... I do what... know, Rose. You're Bill Prawley's daughter. That's right. Dirty Bill's daughter. Look, Rose... Oh, I know what they called him. Dirty Bill Prawley. All the cheap little tin horns that tried to cheat him and lost their shirt doing it. They're cowards. And that's the only way they could hit back. Give a dog a bad name and shoot him for mad. Take her, Marshal. She's gone clean Shut out of my mind. Shut up, before you get us both killed. My father was a fine man, and anybody that says different is a liar. Marshal. That night he was killed, I was upstairs asleep. The shots woke me up. I looked out of my window, and I saw a man run out the front door with a gun still in his hand. I saw him for just a second in the light from the door. But I never forget his face. Elko here, huh? Let's see him. Don't listen to her, Marshal. She's lying. It's a job for the law now, Rose. Now you walk away from this table, Marshal. Stay clear of this. I got nothing against you personally. I want your gun, Rose. Sorry. The hand's played out. No, not yet, it isn't. I got a whole card. Hey, Slim. Slim Raddock. Marshal. Yeah, Marshal. Come here a minute, will you? What do you think you're doing now? Marshal, you... Hold it, Elko. Keep your hands on the table. What's going on? Get away, Slim. Stay back. Right here, Slim, between me and Elko, huh? No. That's right. What's the matter, Rose? Oh, you fool. All right, Rose. You were planning to give him back his money, so he must mean something to you. And he's in it now, too. The way a shotgun works, it's all three of us or none of us. Now you hand over that gun. No. Oh, Slim, why didn't you stay clear? Now, what's this all about? Rose, I want that gun, and I want it now. You knew I couldn't. You knew I couldn't, not with him in it. Well, I was sure hoping you couldn't. Chester, here, put this in the back of the bar, will you? 
Jones. It wasn't fair, Marshal. It was cheating. It wasn't fair. Sometimes you have to cheat, Rose. Get her out of here, Slim. And if you take my advice, you'll keep her out of here. Don't you worry about that. Come on, Rose. That wasn't the doggonest thing I ever saw. Hey, Elko! Wait a minute. No. I said, wait a minute, you're under arrest. You're not taking me in, Marshal. Look out, he's got a gun! Drop it, drop that gun! Oh. Yes. Well, man, uh, I guess a man's luck can't last forever. Yeah. It sure didn't, did it? In a moment, our star, William Conrad. Now a public service message from CBS Radio. What is America really like? Thousands of men, women, and young people all over the world want to know the truth. There's proof of it in the flood of mail received by the volunteer group called Letters Abroad, which gets mail from people everywhere in the free world who are eager to be in correspondence with someone in the United States. They want to know all sorts of details about our everyday life. Anyone who is over 15 years of age who would like to write to someone overseas in Europe, the Middle East, or the Far East should send his or her name and a stamped, self-addressed envelope to Letters Abroad, 45 East 65th Street, New York, New York, together with information about age, occupation, and interests, which will make possible selection of a suitable correspondent. That address again is Letters Abroad, 45 East 65th Street, New York, New York. Everyone who does enter into such a correspondence is sure to find it greatly rewarding, a contribution to better understanding among peoples of the free world. And now, William Conrad. You know, when they buried a man out on the high plains, they usually wrapped him in his saddle blanket and forgot about him. But next week, a man dies and leaves a will that keeps the whole of Dodge from forgetting him. And that was the West. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The script was specially written for Gunsmoke by Les Crutchfield, with editorial supervision by John Meston. The music was composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Ray Kemper and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Virginia Christine, Vic Perrin, and John Daner. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story on Gunsmoke.